Hello everyone, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and this week's color throwdown challenge is um, so really kind of pale seaside sort of color combo. That's what I thought anyway when I looked at it, and I had to pull out the new My Favorite Things Seaside Seagulls stamp set that when I showed in it when I showed this set in the release haul video that I did, I couldn't stop gushing over the set. I just think it's so adorable. So I took three of the seagulls from the set and I stamped them onto Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock with Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink, which is a Copic friendly ink. And then after I stamp them, I'm doing some super simple coloring. I think seagulls are going to be added to my list of favorite images which include pandas and penguins and ninjas, snowmen, <laughs> aka really simple. <laughs> Not much coloring needed. So these do took no time at all. I just did very very basic coloring. I used N4 and then N1 and then my colorless blender to just kind of blend everything out. But I just wanted to add, you know, a little bit of something so they're not just flat and boring. Adding that little bit of gray just kind of makes everything sort of pop. So I started with that first. And then for their beaks, I went with yellows because this color challenge is gray, a yellow, a really light blue, and a really light brown. So I did Y15 and then Y11 and Y00 for their beaks. And then for this little post, the one seagull standing on, I just used E15, E13, and E11. Really, really simple. Um, I will have a picture of the Copics I used on my blog in case, you know, anyone wants to know that. But the coloring took literally probably maybe five minutes. And then I die cut the images with the coordinating die set. And then for my card base, I chose Bristol Smooth cardstock because I wanted to do a little bit of ink blending. Although now, like, looking at this card, I, pro I could have used just like heavyweight smooth white cardstock it's not like I was doing like any real blending I was just applying ink here so in my head I was like oh I want you know a smooth cardstock you know I love the Bristol smooth for blending inks that sort of thing but this is very simple and basic so a person I basically wasted my Bristol smooth on this I could have just used like MFT's smooth white would have been perfect for this so just an FYI but I'm using the new cloud stencil that has been super super popular and rightfully so, it's fabulous. So I just very simply sponged some clouds um, onto the top portion of my card front using um, My Favorite Things Blue Breeze ink, and I just basically pulled ink like almost off the stencil onto the card. Really, really easy. And then I pulled out the Radiating Rays stencil, which I bought this, I think this was part of last month's release, I forget when it came out. But I bought it and it's been sitting here in the package and I like had to have it and haven't used it yet. But using it just this once, I was like, this is why I bought it because it's fabulous. Anyway, I sponged over that with MFT's Lemon Chiffon ink. And same thing, just kind of pulled the ink off the stencil onto the card because I wanted it to fade out. And then removed the stencil and then just sponged the ink directly into the center there for the sun. I had masked off the to top portion, which is the back of the card with some post-it tape to keep the ink from getting on there. And then to start creating my scene, I die cut some craft cardstock with the single stitch line rounded rectangle frames dynamics. Say that three times fast. And then I die cut some blue breeze and some vellum with the new ocean waves dynamics. So to create three different edges. And my plan was to use that frame for something to adhere the vellum and the blue cardstock to. So I figured out kind of where I wanted to place things and then I flipped over the frame so I have the back of it facing up and then I'm just applying a really thin line of my Tonic Nouveau adhesive because I don't want to apply too much because otherwise it's going to ooze out off the edges here and I press the first layer of the die cut vellum onto that and then once I was happy with that I'm going to line up the blue cardstock next and I kind of want them staggered. So just to give it that little extra bit of something. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Just run that line of adhesive just along the back of the frame because you don't want it to go anywhere else because um, adhesive is going to show through vellum. So I adhered that layer. And then I'm going to adhere the third layer. And that's when I realized I was like, I don't need to, you know, do anything fancy with the adhesive technically because no one's going to see it. So I trimmed off the excess vellum with that piece because it's like I can use that for something else. And then just applied, I still was like in that mode of applying adhesive to the frame, but I could have applied it to the back of the blue cardstock because like I said, no one's going to see it. But then I have all my layers there kind of staggered to create this scene for my images. 
And then I'm just gonna use my scissors to trim off the bits that are hanging off of the bottom of this here. So just kind of following along the edge of the frame and then get rid of that piece. And then um, I die cut a sentiment from MFT's Lemon Chiffon cardstock with the MFT Thanks and Hello Dynamics. This is one of my favorite sentiment dynamics set. I just love the font of this one. So I die cut that three times from the Lemon Chiffon cardstock and I'm gonna stack these together. So same adhesive, just my Tonic Nouveau, trying really hard to like not squeeze this bottle too hard. This is a fairly, I wouldn't call it like, it's not a watery liquid. It's not as thick as Ranger's Multimedia Matte. It comes out a lot easier, but it's not watery, if that makes sense. So it does spread really easy. It comes out of the bottle really easily. So adhering more detail items like this, um, one just has to be a little bit careful not to let it get um, too much out. Otherwise, it's just going to ooze out everywhere and you're going to have a mess. So I stacked all three of these sentiments together. And then I am going to go on and start creating um, like the main part of the card. And as I was doing the sentiments, I kept looking at this frame. I was like, you know, I just, I don't like, I don't know. I didn't like how the craft card stock looked. It just, there was something about it. It was just bugging me. So I pulled up my Distress Ink in Vintage Photo and just sponged around um, this whole frame. It just gave it a little bit extra depth. It made it a little more brown. I think that's why it was bothering me. It just wasn't brown enough. So yeah, sponge that on and I was kind of happier with that and it gave it a little bit more like depth, I guess. And then I went along and trimmed down some foam tape here because this frame is fairly narrow. So I trimmed off about a third of um, a strip of foam tape. So trim that down and then I'm going to peel off the backing and that'll make it more flexible. And then I just had to fiddle a bit because it just wasn't wanting to agree with me, but fiddle a bit so I can just follow along the top of the inside of the frame here. So I can get foam tape applied to this entire um, back of the frame. And then for the rest of it, I just used the foam tape as is. There was no need to like do any fiddling or anything else. So I just ripped off a few pieces, a few more pieces of foam tape to back this um, blue cardstock, making sure that none of it went over the vellum, because again, you'll see it through the vellum. And then I'm going to center this onto my card front here and get this adhered into place. And then once I've got that adhered, I can start actually adding all these little elements to create the scene for my cards. So these little seagulls, I kind of went back and forth of how I was going to place them. But once I finally settled on where I was going to put them, the first little seagull here, I just used another piece of foam tape on the back of it and just popped him into place really simply. And then the other one, because it was tucked down a little further and I had to use a really small piece of foam tape, I just added a tiny little bit of the adhesive to the post there and then just slip that in between the vellum and the blue cardstock and press that into place and then press down a little bit of foam tape that's behind his head. And off camera, I had stamped and embossed um, sentiments from the Seaside Seagull stamp set. I stamped them onto some MFT uh, gravel gray cardstock and then embossed them with white embossing powder. I totally didn't realize. I didn't have the camera on. I can't remember. I either didn't have it on or I wasn't in frame or something. So anyway, I just stamped and embossed them and then trimmed them out with my paper trimmer. And then um, popped the sentiment into place with some foam tape. So it says, thanks, girlfriend, which I just think is adorable. And then the second sentiment says, you go, girl. So stamped that, embossed it, trimmed it out, and I'm adhering that to the inside of the card, and then adhering that third little seagull um, right above it, so it looks like he's kind of standing right on top of the sentiment. And of course, I couldn't leave the card just here. I needed to add something. So I was raving about the Simon Says Stamp. Um, they're the Doodlebug collaboration of little shape sprinkles of all these different eyes which I think I bought like three packs and I've been hoarding them ever since refusing to touch them <laughs> so I actually pulled them out and peeled off a couple and added them to the seagulls just to add that little extra something I just thought it was hilarious and then as a final bit of embellishment I have my pretty pink posh um, sparkling clear mix sequins so I just kind of arranged those on the card as I saw fit and then I'm going to adhere those into place with the Nouveau adhesive again. I was kind of thinking like I just liked how it's kind of think looks like bubbles really. So just pick those up with my little crystal katana, put down a dab of the Nouveau adhesive and then press those into it and that finished off my card. So as always, I will have links below the video to my blog post. In the blog post, I will have 
pictures of the card, links to multiple sources for all of the supplies used. So if you're interested in any of that, check out the description box below the video and check out my blog. Thank you all so much for watching, subscribing, thumbs up, and commenting on my video. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.